Wednesday of the month, so that means we got all sorts of fun people in here. And joining me now is the legend himself, CEO John Alley. Good morning. Morning. Thanks for the intro. I usually that's just in my mind, so I'm glad <laughs> to see somebody else recognizes that also. Oh yeah, absolute legend. Had a pretty exciting board meeting yesterday. You know, they've been kind of catch up and everything. So this kind of the, really getting into this year's 2021 financials and stuff. So one of the biggest things we did, we've been working on uh, kind of a collaboration with Biomet Zimmer for about three months now. So it finally got everything finalized yesterday. So we're going to be adding another robot to, uh, to Woodlawn's uh, stable here. Uh, it's called the Rosa Knee Robot. And that's a, a, it helps the surgeons with a state-of-the-art surgery uh, that basically allows the surgeon, prior to your knee surgery, they take x-rays of your knee, they can go into this robot and virtually look at that surgery and do it before they ever make their first incision. Oh, wow. So what we found is, a, you know, from a, an accuracy, when we're looking at that angle of cut to put the knee in, this will guarantee if you need a 30 degree angle, you will absolutely have a perfect 30 degree angle. So really excited with that. Uh, surgeons, both Dr. Rombach and Dr. Sheedy are real excited. Hopefully the machine will be in this week, uh, start training staff. Dr. Sheedy's already done some uh, training at Biomet Zimmer. Dr. Rombach will be going over and get her training. So we're hoping to start doing some surgeries with this within the next two to three weeks. So, uh, you know, we've added that to the Da Vinci now, and now this. Uh, all of our surgeons now are going to be robotically trained. Uh, Dr. Nile got his training this week, uh, did his first two robotic surgeries yesterday. Uh, Dr. Pullman's doing it. Dr. Clyde, Dr. Ida Bio, now Dr. Rombach, and Dr. Sheedy. So really exciting news for the, our patients because what that brings to them is one much faster recovery time, less pain. So you know you can have your surgery and, and you're back up and at it fairly quick as opposed to you know the old days. Remember you were in the hospital six weeks for a minor yeah. surgery. So yeah. this really is up in the game for our patients in this area and uh, Surgeons are excited, they like it, the staff is excited, so it was just kind of a fun day to finally get that all, all completed. We had several other purchases that we went through last year, it was on our capital budget. Um, OD, OB department is looking to become a level one birthing center. So there are certain requirements you have to meet to do that. One of those is we've got uh, basically uh, automated syringes. So we put, a, uh, current ones don't have an automated drug library. The new ones will. So okay. now that's one of the requirements. So, you know, if you try to infuse a drug that's not in the library, it's not going to let you do it. So again, a real patient safety issue. Our cardiac rehab department is getting a new step bike. What they've had before was the Airdynes. If you remember, those are fairly big and clunky. Well, if you're going through rehab, it's hard to get up on those. These yeah. new ones are lower to the floor. They've got a rotating seat, so much easier for the patients to get into. Um, as we look into more of the da Vinci type surgeries, there's a, a device that we, uh, was approved yesterday. Currently, if you have a certain procedure, a staff member is holding basically this device for the okay. whole surgery. Oh. Well, you can imagine after a while, your arm yeah. is tired or you got to trade out. What we've got now is it's a positioning device that's now part of the robot. So once it's in place, the robot doesn't get tired. Yeah. It will keep, you know, identical where it needs to be in relation to everything else. So again, just another step forward as we're, you know, pursuing the robotic surgeries. Um, IT department needs a new tape drive. We've run out of, for our backups, <laughs> run out of space. Imagine that. You would think, uh, you know, you'd never run out. And I think we're they're talking now terabytes of data, which I have no idea what that is. <laughs> but it sounds like a lot. It, it's a lot. It's yeah. a lot. Okay. Um, we need a new postage meter. It was approved. And then as we're looking for 2021, 2022, our um, IT system, or the, basically the, the computer system for the hospital, hasn't been updated since 2005. Oh, wow. Well, they've come up with an update, so now we're starting that process. So everybody knows how those updates work. You know, the, the manufacturer says, no problem, go smooth. So HR is going to be the first program that we bring on, and uh, probably within the next 90 days, do an upgrade to the payroll system financial system will come after that and then the clinical system after that so we're anticipating uh, you know a lot of headaches anytime you do a, a, an upgrade nothing seems to work like it's supposed to so right. we're just going in with the anticipating the worst and hope for the best on that 
It's the best thing you can do when you yeah, with that's, IT. Yeah, that's about it right now. Uh, finally got into the financial report, and uh, you know it was one of those you'd like to just say, yeah, we had it and move on. <laughs> January wasn't a very good month. We had uh, several physicians either uh, on vacation or out sick. So if we're not seeing patients in the clinics, then we're not seeing them in the hospital. There's no ancillary revenue. So we had uh, about 12.8 million was our gross charges. We wrote off 8.4 million, which is again about that 60% we're keeping you know, in that area. We had some other operating revenue, about 51,000. Had operating expenses of just a little over 5 million. So that gave us an operating loss of about 608,000. Had some non-operating revenue of 300,000. So about a net income of a loss of about 275,000. So you know, as a, a, an old financial guy, okay, what caused that? When we go back and look, you know, we were about six hundred thousand dollars under budget in uh, clinic visits. So that once you take that down, that's just about where our loss is at. Was it just in those uh, just not being able to see patients because we didn't have providers to see them? So, you know, we're hoping to see that turn around a little bit in February. Usually January, February, March are our worst months of the year, and uh, you know we're keeping up with our tradition. February hasn't been uh, real busy yet. And uh, so we get toward the end of the month, seeing a little bit of uptick in the business, but not a lot. We'd like to see a little more. Then the other thing that uh, we've been working on very hard is become stroke certified. And we've got that. Uh, there's a national accrediting agency that comes in, looks at our whole program, and you know, they're fairly stringent. You know, are you uh, ready to take care of stroke patients as they hit your door? So we've become stroke certified, and you know, it's just the, I guess, the awareness that we've been putting out there. Before we were, anticip were having about two strokes a month, we're up to about three a week now. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I think what it is is just recognizing the signs and symptoms. Yeah. Uh, we you know, coordinate this effort with EMS, so if you call an ambulance to your house, say, ah, just something's going on, they're able to recognize very quickly signs and symptoms of the stroke. So if they anticipate that, they radio the hospital, we have the CT scanner waiting. So when the patient comes in, they go straight to the CT scanner, so we can get that brain scan, is there a bleed going on? And then we have a, the capability to do telemedicine with a uh, neurosurgeon in Fort Wayne. We bring the, the uh, computer and the screen into the room. That surgeon can have a conversation with our physician and the patient. So you're getting almost immediate surgical intervention on that. So do we transfer, do we keep you here? It's just been working great. We've had some super outcomes, some really good catches of, you know, folks, it, had they not come in, probably would have had some permanent damage. Most of them within a week, they're fine because you can get that early intervention, you know, get the blood, uh, you know, the clot busters or whatever you need in there, and you can make a full recovery. So, you know, if you think you're having signs and symptoms of a stroke, time is money, lack of a better term. You've yeah. got to get medical intervention very quickly. So don't be ashamed. Call EMS, come to the hospital, say, hey, I think I'm having a stroke. We're going to evaluate you immediately. If you're having one, we have the capability now to really get top level service to you very quickly to prevent any long term damage. So it's just working great. I'm going to kind of put you on the spot here. Uh oh. Okay. I know there's been some changes to um, how you tell for sure if someone is having a stroke. What are those symptoms? Yeah, right now, you know, we kind of like the acronym, you know, it's F A S T. Face, are you having some droopage of one side of your face or not? Another one is, you know, arms. If you hold your arms out, does one want to drift? You just, you don't have control over that. The other one is speech. Are you having some uh, slurred speech? We we'll say that five times. <laughs> you know, that's another sign. And then the T stands for time. We need to get you in very quickly. So that's the best if you can just remember fast. Am I having facial droop? You know, I have an arm, we call it arm drift. I just can't keep one, one side or the other. Speech issues and then time. Get to your nearest emergency room as fast as you can. Best thing to do is, if you suspect that is to call 911 because they can start very at the house some interventions instead of you, know, you getting in your car, driving to the hospital, you know, you're wasting time. So just keep fast in mind. That's probably the easiest one. And uh, face, arms, speech, time. That's probably the easiest way to do that. Okay. Um, now I know we've talked the past uh, several months 
uh, about some uh, money you guys got from the government for COVID. Have yes. you figured out what you're able to do with that? Yet? Absolutely not. Uh, <laughs> every time we get some direction from the, you know, the government saying you can use it for this, so we're starting to plan, and then we get, well, wait a minute, we've rethought that. No, you can't. So uh, we're working with uh, our basically our auditors who have some contacts in D.C., some lobbyists. So we're hoping within the next 10 to 15 days to have a little better idea, you know, what can we spend that money on? So, you know, it, it looks good on the financials because it's all just sitting in the savings account, but we've got some things we'd love to use that money for. Uh, but the only money we've been able to use was the uh, payroll protection plan money. Uh, way back when this first started, you know, we was able to get enough to fund our payroll for three months. Had we not got that, unfortunately, we would probably have to lay a lot of people off because we had no patience. But we was able to keep everybody working. Now, they weren't doing their normal jobs. We had to find stuff for them to do. Right. But at least they got their paycheck, which, you know, really helped them through that March, April, May time period where we had very, only patients we had were emergencies. So there was no electives at all coming in. So that money we've been able to uh, certify that it was used correctly. We've turned that into the government. And, and last I heard, they have approved our plan how we use that money. We're still sitting on some of the other that we're just not sure yet how they're going to allow it to use it. Um, I'm pretty, one of the last ones we heard was they're going to look at where is your financial net revenue compared to your budgeted net revenue. Okay. If that one goes through, we're well below for 2020 our budgeted net revenue. So if that's the final plan, then we'll be able to apply those funds against that, that number and bring those into the financials. So we're hoping that's how they do it. Uh, don't have a final yet. So it's, it's one of those hurry up and wait. And, uh, you know, it's, it's frustrating because we, we'd like to be able to you know, close that out because that's still kind of hanging out there from 2020. But we'll wait and uh, just see what they tell us we can do with it. Now, how are the numbers looking at Woodlawn for COVID patients? Zero today. Well, wait a minute. We do have one today. We've had probably the past two weeks, seven or eight days with zero patients in-house. So we're seeing a dramatic decline in those presenting with, with COVID. Um, you know, is the vaccine helping? It's pretty early. I, I think it is. Uh, so I don't know. I, it's, it's hard to tell. I'm glad to see that we're not having you know, as many patients as we did have. I know state levels have dramatically dropped of new cases per day. Uh, so I think locally we're seeing a decline also. So, you know, best I can say, if you haven't got your vaccine and you're eligible, absolutely get it. Um, <clears throat> a lot of, don't believe the internet, uh, don't believe Facebook. You know, there's a lot of false information out there about the vaccine. Uh, everybody reacts differently to it. We've seen zero major reactions to that. A lot of my, you know, sore arms, a headache maybe, a little just feeling tired. That's been about it. And, uh, you know, we just discussed it today. We've only got about 25% of our staff has been vaccinated. So we were wanting to push that a little more. And I, a lot of them was waiting for us to get the vaccine at the hospital. Well, we're still waiting. Uh, we've applied to the Indiana Department of Health oh, back in November. I've heard nothing. So, you know, I don't know if it's just because there's still not that major supply yet right uh, i know harry at uh, at webb's pharmacy applied also so we're both in that waiting game hopefully as they get more doses available we can open up and start getting more people in get them vaccinated uh, and that's going to be i think the the final thing the more we get vaccinated the quicker this thing's going to get over um you know a lot of folks say well i've already had it i don't need the vaccine well yeah you do um we're seeing cases now where uh, somebody had it early on say in march or april they got it again in September and October. So, you, you know, your natural immunity seems to last 90 to 120 days. Okay. We're seeing from the vaccine right now, it's much longer lasting. I don't think we still know is it going to be a permanent one and done. Right. My best guess is going to be like the flu. You're going to have to probably get a booster annually to, you know, keep that going. Uh, because, you know, if you follow the news, there's a lot of variants now. What the, the virus started out as, it's not that anymore. There's exactly. several different variations out there. And that's what viruses do. They mutate to, to meet their environment. So uh, I think there'll probably be an annual bo booster, much like the flu shot. Um, the good news is what we found so far is that the COVID vaccine is far more effective than the flu vaccine. At best, the flu vaccine is about 30% to 40% effective. We're seeing with the COVID vaccine, we're still in that 90 to 95% effective. So much better vaccine than the, than the flu. So 
you know, maybe annually they'll just combine the, the COVID and the flu into one shot and, and we'll be good to go. So uh, looking forward to the day when we can all walk around without masks. Uh, it's coming, it's just not quite yeah. here yet. And uh, you've had both your shots? I've had both my shots, yes. I, you know, I said I've had my shots and I've been flea dipped, so I'm good to go. <laughs> you know, like, uh, but, you know, uh, one of the things that, you know, for a while I was just carrying my little card around, because you never know if somebody's going to want to see that. And uh, finally I figured, why don't I just put a, take a photo of it and keep it in my phone? So, you know, if you've got your COVID vaccine, we don't know, you know, at some point, is airlines going to say they need proof of vaccine? So, you know, if you got your card, take a photo of it, keep it in your phone. If somebody needs it, then you can show them that. So, uh, you know, it's just uh, wasn't that bad. Like I say, you know, the arm was a little sore, and that was about it. So, highly recommend getting your flu shot. All righty. A flu shot, sorry, COVID <laughs> shot. Well, both of them. Yeah, both of them, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Mr. Alley, thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, always a pleasure talking to you. I've learned so much each month, and I love knowing what Woodlawn's up to. Yeah, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Thank you. We'll talk to you next month. All righty.